Let's talk about it here at Nate's Table Talk. Uh, we're just talking about today. The um, it's coming up. Easter is approaching. Um, and most of the people are going to be talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I want just y'all to share with us today what are we going to deal with about the resurrection of Jesus Christ that people can really have a a, a happy or a good Easter than rather than having a bad Easter because some people don't want it's a uh, it can be uh, a challenging thing uh, because there are some that um, it challenged their thought or their belief on Easter about the resurrection how can a person be raised again uh, the, from uh, from the dead so how would you approach that uh, Legans Reverend Legans and then we'll have Reverend Mason he's going to approach that as well. You know, some theologians say that the greatest commemoration is truly Easter, even instead of Christmas, should be the greatest celebration for the Christian. I'm not going to argue that point, but the great relief to the greatest of fear amongst people usually is death. So the resurrection demonstrates the beauty in Christ, even to salvation from damnation and death. So that's a great relief from the greatest of fear that people can threaten our life and make us do a myriad of things. But to know that there's life on the other side, that Jesus proved that through his resurrection, that, it, that the power of resurrection is demonstrated in Christ. Even Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, huh? for it is the power of of God unto salvation to every man that believes. So it's not about eggs, cut dying eggs? No, it can't I don't be. Like rabbits, no way. You know, <clears throat> that's the most travesty <laughs> that we exploit the Easter egg because of people's ignorance. When we were kids, when I was a kid, I used to love to go Easter egg hunt and stuff. We never knew what it was for until I became aware of what we call the goddess Istatar. And that goddess was the one that supposedly the Greeks believe in uh, ancient uh, Egyptian culture believes that an egg fell from heaven, fish pushed it up, birds laid on it, and out came this goddess of fertility. And so these eggs, when you open them up and there's a prize inside, that's what it symbolizes. The eggs don't have anything to do with uh, with what the whole purpose of Easter is. So that Easter egg hunt, you know, that's just, uh, you know, a tradition that probably uh, probably needs to be stopped. Per so you mean to tell me that we can't hunt eggs? Man, I can't let, I, the, the, the kids can't hunt eggs? Well, let's look at it from a, a biblical perspective. Uh, in Matthew chapter 15 and in Mark 7, it talked about some tradition there, didn't it? And it talked about how you make your tradition uh, to make the word of God null effect. So, uh, and even Paul even says in the Bible that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So if we're going to start them out young to disciple, we need to disciple them with the truth. Even though, e e even though they have the truth. You can teach them the truth, but what's wrong with them hunting eggs? Well, uh, you know, as I have to borrow one out of uh, old Joshua, whenever Joshua came up and Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Not and uh, we don't have no... We but don't you, know, can we're serve, not. you can serve the Lord without and still yet hunt Easter eggs, can't well, you? I mean, I mean, you still, what is, uh, what is the whole point behind still, Easter egg hunt? What, just to gather and having fun. Okay, we can gather and have fun without Easter eggs. Well, you do that. You can do that. Well, okay, you take that. But you do other things still yet within the church. You do Christmas, you do Halloween, you do this and that. Well, you are, and then not even those things, not even those things. We go and we buy different clothes. We try to dress up for church here and there for this program and that. I, me personally, I don't see anything wrong with uh, someone hunting East eggs. As long as they know what they're doing, what the Word of God says, if they've been discipling you, teaching them, nothing's ask, wrong with let that. Let me ask Brother Mason, he, 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 you know, he, theologian. What is the tradition of overlaying Christian holidays with pagan holidays? Well, that's simple. It's to keep the it's to keep the 
Christian from participating in, well, back way back then, was to keep the Christian from participating in the, the attraction of those pagan events. And so <clears throat> during the time of the time of Rome and, and all of that, uh, it's just like what Christmas is uh, here today. Uh, a lot of people don't, they, I won't say a lot, but some haven't really done the history as to what it was back in New York. The Macy's Day Parade, it was a time of shopping and things of that nature. And so, <clears throat> okay, so before our time run out, so then is it a teacher, could we make it a teachable moment then? Every moment's teachable. Okay, but in the midst of enticing, like the Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. If we can use the Easter egg to get them here, you know, put some scripture or whatever inside, but take it as a teachable moment. Every moment is teachable. Okay. That's what, yeah, every moment is but teachable. But would you be against that? You think it's a, a heaven and hell issue? Well, to... it's never, a heaven and hell issue comes down to whether or not an individual believes in Jesus Christ or not. Those are heaven and hell issues. Heaven and hell issues of a, a tradition uh, doesn't debunk an individual's belief system and whether or not they believe in Jesus or they don't believe in Jesus. You have people that are ignorant to certain things that uh, go on uh, as far as their progressive sanctification, which we all have experienced that. But that doesn't, that's not heaven, that's not going to debunk and put me in hell because I go and I go Easter egg hunting. That's not a heaven or hell issue. That's a matter of practice. That's why we dealt with at the beginning well, of the see, tradition. Well, see, the reason why I say that <laughs> uh, to you to you all, and I brought that up because of the fact you play, you play dominoes, you play baseball, softball, none of that's in the Bible either. I mean, so we do things, we do things, uh, I think when we have the knowing of why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing it has the, uh, 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 will, will determine whether it's, is it a right or is it a wrong thing to do? Uh, because when you know your position in Christ and you know who you are in Christ, There's liberty there are things to that. that you can do that has nothing to do with your position because you know your position in Christ. But like, well, how do and we, then children as well. How do we, I mean, you're the pastor here and, and, you know, you're the spiritual leader. So if you say we can do those things, like some people say, you can't play dominoes in church. I was at a church, they were having an argument in a sanctuary about <laughs> playing dominoes. Okay. And that's why I say there are things we do here. People playing bingo. People doing this and that. I mean, it's a lot of things that we do. Uh, uh, we find ourselves doing what we can call tradition, but is it a right or wrong? And I think it's not a it's not a matter of right or wrong. It's knowing the truth behind it and being just enjoying yourself. And then I think again, Lee, you said something that was pretty powerful. There is making every moment of that make it a teachable moment. Because it can be a teachable moment. Uh, everything, like I, like I said, everything is a teachable. Everything that we do is a teachable moment. You have to always look for opportunities to minister. And even with the bingo and everything else, it, I would much rather, and I'm pretty sure everybody sitting here will agree with this, I would much rather have our church membership in the church, playing, laughing, joking around with each other, playing bingo here at church, than being out somewhere where there can possibly, where it could be looked at and viewed as bringing or putting a hickey on where somebody really doesn't understand why they're moving in their Christian liberty. Okay. You know, it's just a thing that we're going to have to deal with perceptions all our lives. Right, you know, for real, we, we're that's uh. See, that's why I was saying that. Even when I brought up that, I brought it up because mostly at, around this time of the year, we're going to be talking about the resurrection. Why we wait to the last the, this time of the year to bring up the resurrection? Let me answer. I'm, you, that was a direct question that we never we got on Easter eggs. <laughs> let me let me answer that question. Every day we live symbolizes the resurrection of Christ. Absolutely. So to relegate that to one day of the year and not even knowing what that particular day really is, 
it's kind of, uh, you know, it might be played back a little bit. But for a Christian, one who is really knows their position in Christ, we celebrate that every day. That's an everyday celebration. Well, and, and the thing, you mentioned something earlier about a topic, and it, uh, it comes back to Deuteronomy 6. And I, I think like even for you, you can witness as a pastor, that you make your brother stumble. You have someone who's been in the church for a long time, but they believe things like that. You can't have no Easter egg, you know, around the church. There's a pagan symbol. Or they believe you can't play dominoes in the church. And they think of it as a heaven or hell issue. You know, and the Bible call, thinks of, talks, speaks of making people stumble, your brother stumble. But going back to that Deuteronomy 6, that training up people from youth, of what the Word of God says, even before they recognize Christ, so that they know the truth and not traditions and suppositions. And, and the, it's an alarming to me when I hear people say in the church, I think, I feel. That, that should set off alarm bells in the people of God. Well, if you tell me, uh, yes, I will concur, but understand your source. If I'm speaking to pastor, if I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. when you say, I think, or I feel, or I believe, because of the nature of the relationship, I'm able to look outside of the vernacular to really understand what you're saying because we're going to weigh it by the word. I understand that. You understand that. But guess where it comes from? We got to know each other before we can talk like that. If we don't know each other, boom, my alarm bell goes off too. Because, you know, at, at some classes, we don't care what you believe. We don't care what you think. We don't care how you feel. What does the Bible say? Doc's saying, we ain't going to make it up. We're going to what? Look it up. That's it. So if we're not going to, this is the guide. The plumb bob is the word of God. And if that be the word of God, please understand us. When we're here at Next Table Talk, we are preachers, we have our pastor, and we are, we're Bible, but we're trying to talk your language so you'll understand what exactly we're just really talking about. But that's what it's all about. It comes back to the end. It comes back to the Word. Okay. So, um, yes, again, we do know that the resurrection should be talked about throughout. Yes. Even when you're preaching, you're talking resurrection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not just wait till a particular time of the mm -hmm. year that we speak about uh, the resurrection. Uh, we should always, because the Bible really, the gospel is what the death, burial, and resurrection That's of Jesus it. Christ. That's what the Word says. And so, uh, again, we do want to say to those who will be uh, enjoying this coming up holiday, that you enjoy this holiday and remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'll see you at next table.